Wanted, dead or barely alive. Your old or outdated computers, monitors, and televisions, working or not. Don't trash it, recycle it. eCycle Washington makes it easy. Households, small businesses, public schools, and other organizations in Washington may drop off unwanted computers, monitors, and televisions at over 300 locations statewide for free. Find the location nearest you at eCycleWashington.org and click on Where Can I Recycle? That's eCycleWashington.org. Get Macy's lowest prices of the season on specials for cooler weather, like cute boots and booties starting at $27.99 and warm new coats for all 50 to 60% off. And get cafe-style coffee at your fingertips with select Nespresso bundles for only $124.99, now at Macy's. Plus, get your Macy's order faster when you pick up curbside or in-store. Or try same-day delivery powered by DoorDash. Savings off sale and clearance prices. Exclusions apply. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm Attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. The Lucky Devil Lounge. If that sounds familiar to you, either A, you go to Portland a lot and see the strip clubs, or B, you know they're the people that actually made Steve's idea a reality. <laughs> a topless delivery service. Yep, those are the folks uh, that created Boober Eats. And, and, Dude, and Rolling Stone did a whole article about it. That's oh, how big this is. Wow, oh, man. Oh, yes. Missed opportunity, Steve. Gosh, those. I never would have done it. That's why people are like, I can't believe. I'm like, A, a million people probably had the same stupid joke. And they were the only smart ones to actually turn it into an idea. I want to tell you this right now. You're the only person I've ever heard do that stupid joke. Only because I want to make you feel bad that you had an original <laughs> idea and you, and, you, and you missed out on it. <laughs> I mean, I could have been the boss of these girls. Uh, you know, it's probably I, for the best. I have to tell you, I want them to come deliver food to me. I think they, uh, this is terrific. One of the girls, I'm looking at the picture on Rolling Stone, which you can find just on, just type in probably Boober Eats Rolling Stone. Uh... She has the two twins from The Shining oh, on her stomach. Yes. And then right above he- her area, it says Red Rum. Cool. Oh, uh, yeah, red Room. Let's say, yeah, Red, red, red room. room. Red Rum. No, Red Rum. Oh, is it Red Rum? Yeah, because it's, yeah, murder, it's murder Backwards. Murder backwards. Oh! <laughs> Did you not realize that? No, I understood it was Murder Backwards, but I, I, always, I, always, I, I, I thought they always said Red Rum. Red Rum. Like, I mean, it still made it sound like a room, even though it was spelled Red Rum. You just you, said Rum. You, you said just rum. said Rum. I said Red Rum. No, you said red rum. You said red rum. That time you tried to force a little room under yeah. the rum, but that the first time you said rum. Uh, you know what? I, granted, we won't talk about it now. No, I want to talk about it now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought they were saying, I know it's murder backwards, but I always thought they were saying red rum, red rum. Oh, maybe I am saying rum. You're saying yeah. red rum. Red rum. Oh, wow. And, and I've always, yeah, yeah I think did you I just think put an ET into our shining. Yes. Yeah, I did. So, yeah, Is that's that John really Claude cool. Van Damme that she has tattooed on her leg? Is that? Yeah. Oh, she's got the best tattoos ever. Quite possibly. She, look, I got news for you. She's got a lot more than the best tattoos ever. <laughs> it's close to tattoos. It's a different <laughs> word. Uh, she's a she's fantastic. They, I mean, they're all fantastic. I, I, I'm gonna, I look. I'm, I'm going to unapologetically say that when I am stressed out, to see a picture like that just naturally puts a smile on my face. And I don't. Mm-hmm. And I know it's biology. I and and so I am so happy they're doing this because. Dude, we need something to, to beat the stress right now. I need something to put a smile on my face. And a gorgeous woman, and I would say gorgeous to me. You know, I, I find many things gorgeous that people go, really? Beat the her, stress. Her name is Brody Grody. I love Brody Grody. <laughs> it's, it's not a, a Van Damme. It is actually Ash from uh, Evil Dead. That's oh, even better. Because oh, it fits with the whole horror theme. Oh, Bruce That's Campbell. Amazing. That is so so awesome. How crazy her name is Brody Grody and she's actually a fan of all these horror things. Yeah, exactly. That's her birth name. I yes. Yeah, probably. Right? Yeah. I don't uh, know. Yeah, don't dancers have last names. I love her. Ah! So here's the thing. From 7 p.m. to 1 a.m., Boober Eats is offering the full menu at the same price as you could get if you went to the, to the strip club, which of course is closed like a lot of places are because of the coronavirus. 
And depending on the distance, there's a $30 delivery charge. That's split between the stripper, good old Brody, what's her name? Brody Grody. Good old Brody Grody. And, of course, the security person and driver. Makes sense to have security with you in this situation. That could be a PR nightmare. According to the club owner, Sean, the idea started as a joke that he made on social media, but then became a reality when he saw the potential. He probably was listening to this show. That's oh, where he yeah. got the idea and made the Definitely. joke. I'm sure he knew something. Totally. And uh, so he said, this is, this is actually not a bad idea, and I can keep, I can keep the employees working. Uh, we are now a uh, food delivery service that uh, provides customers with uh, food with a side of boobs. You want burgers, <laughs> fries, and now beers? And you want two gorgeous women to come deliver it for you yes. wearing booty shorts and pasties. I'm yes. trying to employ everybody that works here. So all of our security guards are now drivers. All of our dancers, they're delivering the food to your doorstep. Love this. Our cooks are working. Our bartenders are answering phones. And they're helping out with social media. That's cool that he's still keeping people employed. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, it's fun. It's a strip club and all that. But still, he's trying to find a creative way. So that the people that work at his place can, can continue to pay their bills. It's, and it's also a great stress reliever for people that are, you know, sheltering in place and going crazy. It is a natural dopamine release for, uh, you know, for anybody that really finds those women attractive. I do like how someone texted in, give us a little update about Brody Grody. And yes. Said, Brody Grody once tried to suffocate me with her boobs. It was awesome. Oh. <laughs> Uh, and apparently, according to Brody Grody, because they're like, hey, what's going on? Like, is it weird, though, when you show up to someone's house because you're, you know, you're showing your goods? Is it anyone kind of cross the line? They said, for the most part, everyone's maintained a safe distance. Exception, one intoxicated female customer who tried to give me a hug. The bouncer handled it well. You know, and I will tell you this, and Steve, I, you, I, I don't know if you've had this experience. Women just seem to think that we are out of control, crazy people at strip clubs. But for the most part, men know they'll get their ass kicked, and they never. I, I mean, unless you're just an idiot guy, but right. most There's guys know. To the rule. But women, I have seen because I've actually had to strip for women for charity years ago. <laughs> oh, I did. Oh. Yeah, I did. Oh. Hey, I wasn't the uh, I wasn't the one uh, that you really didn't want to see. Oddly enough, he was also gone by Brody Grody. I sure was. <laughs> I have a Bruce. Campbell tattoo on my yes oh, uh, Vicky's already found Brody Grody's Instagram page. and it is awesome oh man well we've got Olivia and Kiki and they're talking about how this is a great thing for them <laughs> Kiki if the club was to close I would not probably qualify for any kind of unemployment it became very real when this happened that we are independent contractors and dancers work for tips and tips only for the majority of us it's been an almost complete loss of income this is the job Losing this job is devastating. Uh, and, uh, and it's no joke. Because of what they do for a living, and I know that I've got friends that are bartenders and just work in... in re- mm-hmm. they, one of my friends has been already refused twice for unemployment. That sucks. Even though we know what's going on. But uh, seriously, our governmental systems are... This is, well, this is frustrating when you just see how ill-prepared we are for a lot of things. So I applaud these women and Sean for figuring out a way to keep themselves having money pouring in because you really, right now, it is tough to rely on the government because of just for the fact that they just weren't prepared for something like this to have mass filings and so I'm good on them and again they're putting smiles on people's faces and that's well, so Brody important. Grody I'm looking at her Instagram page her, yeah. her uh, Instagram cover photo is uh, it, it's a cabbage with the garbage pail kids yeah. oh nice oh nice it's her as a garbage pail kid I like her a lot she's got she's you know she's just doing everything right yeah she really, really my goodness that girl is yeah Good for her. <laughs> you know what? Uh, congratulations, Grody. 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 Whatever your name is. Do what All you right. can. Yeah, so we go Pump from... her out. I'm sure she's got an OnlyFans page, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I mean, imagine. whatever you could do. She does? Yeah. Of course. Oh, yeah, yeah there it is. There we go. Ah. Ah. See, Steve, you can any way you want to help out. I imagine they're getting good tips. I would hope so. You know, probably, I, I don't know if they go, they probably stay outside. They have to stay outside and not go in the house. So hopefully, right. but maybe there's a little, you know, a little dance, a little show, maybe get a couple extra bucks because of that. I don't know. You don't know. Uh, but they look fantastic. And I would love to get food delivery like that. Uh, we just set up. Daniel put some pasties on. They'll show up to your house with some so, rubber gloves on. He's got the rubber gloves ooh, already. Ooh, can I be security? Yes. Yep. Yes, you yeah. can. Oh, I don't he's trust got the PJ. tattoos. Yeah, he's all set. You're right. I mean, that's just can you like. just like red, write red room over your yeah. uh, pelvis? <laughs> yes, red room. Yeah, red room. Make sure yeah. it's red room. Remember, pronounce it correctly. 
All this time, you thought it was red rum. You know what, dude? And the more I think about it, the more I think you guys are right. It is red rum. Well, red rum. Red rum. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, totally, dude. Yeah, I, well, I, my brain just called it red rum the whole time. Um, and But you're right. Because I was even saying it that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so funny what the brain thinks. Yeah. Yeah. I would have bet you, and I would have lost a lot of money on that one. Oh, man, damn it. You oh. should have bet me. You would have, you would have been a big I just winner. I keep losing money. First, Boober Eats. I know. Boober Eats. Somebody that took that idea. You didn't know when you should make a big bet with me. In all fairness, my idea for Boober was it was Boober, and it was a ride share. Right. That I would also pull over, and the driver would give you a dance. So Maybe, technically, it yeah. wasn't the same. That's probably why it wasn't a great idea, because somebody had to run with that, with yeah. that great title, and realize there's something better to do with it. Yeah, they definitely they took what they had which was a place where they were making food and turned it into something special, hence Boober Eats. I, I, you know, I, I just know that right now is a time for everybody to, you know, do something to self-soothe. That's what they call in the world of mental health, self-soothe. And uh, I have already gone crazy on board games uh, and been sort of like going on Kickstarter and going on, you know, Amazon and talking to my buddies at Zulu's like, can you get me this game? Can you get me that game? Are you torturing yourself because you're buying all these board games and you can't play them with anyone? Here's what you don't know about the the other side of board gaming. Uh Uh-oh. The The, dark side of board gaming. Well, it's... Coming to vice. (laughs) I made a little (laughs) unboxing video that Vicky's going to, she's going to uh, edit for me because the unboxing of a game and punching all of the cardboard and getting all the components put together that high is a pr- it's like it's like opening like a christmas present no, i'm looking at your face like really? you're lighting yeah. up yeah so playing the game is one thing getting it opening it brings me right back to christmas day as a six-year-old so then you're just going to keep ordering games that's so the problem experience. see the you know if, can we get this guy some uh, like bubble wrap or something Oh, right. Just pretend. Yeah, it's it's it's. <laughs> so I I'm, I'm telling you right now. I did that yesterday. One came in a Kickstarter game fulfilled, and I was at the table all day putting it together, and I was so happy and and distracted. See, Steve's right. You are lighting up, but you're not lighting up like a six year old. You're lighting up like a junkie. Yes. Yeah, man. You don't know if I was a six year old junkie or not. I'm telling you. I mean, it started young for me, Vicky. <laughs> Get the DTs just thinking about it. Yeah, it's so well. That's the and that is the problem. I am doing my best to try to manage myself. But the bottom line is this: I'm look. I, I, I'm a behavioral nightmare. Okay, I, mean, I really, really am. I mean, I've went to therapy and found out what I needed to do. Unfortunately, what's happening right now is not good for people like me. So I'm trying my best to not to lose my it. mind. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, um, and you know. I'm having panic attacks going outside because I think people will be mad at me. Even though every time the governor has spoken, he said, you can go outside, just keep your distance. But people see you outside and get mad at you. Well, then how about your neighbor, every time you step outside, goes, get out inside, old man. <laughs> That's a perfect impression of my neighbor, by the way. Wow. Oh, maybe it was me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Steve just driving all the way from Jewel up to Mercer Island just to troll just to me. You, yeah. Just so that I'll feel bad and, 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 and just have these panic attacks. The same old sounding woman man keeps yelling at me. I don't know who it is. I joked about the idea at home just to sit right in our, like, we have like a little room right by the front windows and just sit there and just open up the window and just yell at the old people that are walking around the neighborhood and be like, go back! Inside. Oh God, you're, that's horrible. <laughs> but I figured that would not really be a good idea. You think that would be a good idea? At least not. For me. I'm looking out for their best interest, but maybe it's just the delivery system wouldn't be the best. It'd be me and Lulu. Lulu would be barking, and I'd be yelling, "Go inside, old people!" Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a tough thing, you know, because we're in the media. We are an essential, which the governor did come out and say yesterday with all the essential stuff going yeah, on. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> we, we know what we're sacrificing for you. How but, did we become essential in anything? Right. Well, we do have a license from the Federal Communications Commission. It was a rhetorical uh, question. I, I know, <laughs> no, but I know. But you know what? Uh, you're right. It's it's not so much like the business. It's you mean us in general. Yes. Yeah, us idiots. But but you know what? Since we do have a license, there may be a time where we might have to actually put out information that's necessary as opposed to let's talk about boober eats. Which that I is would, important information. Because once yeah. this pandemic ends, we all need to go to Oregon. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right about Will that. Well, they keep the business going. That's the question. Oh, man. I mean, you know. Whichever one makes ooh, more money, I guess, is what they're going to do. That's the problem because those yeah. girls are probably missing out on big, big tips. Hmm. But at least they're getting something. Their customers aren't, though. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been one of the creepiest things ever come out uh, of your face. Waka. Hello, the Waka Waka is supposed to fix it? Yeah, yes. it does. Okay, it does. Fozzie. Makes it all better. Yeah, okay. Jeez, I don't feel violated after it's that. It's funnier if you picture Fozzie Bear. Saying. God bless it, man. 
That's even worse now. If, if, if somebody comes in and just violates me, and then all of a sudden, waka waka. waka. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you know what? Any hey, crime we're all that, losing our mind right now, BJ. Yeah, you're absolutely we're right. All losing. Our I mind. think the Foo Fighters are losing their mind. Have you heard their latest? You know, I, I, you know. I think Dave Grohl's a great guy, but I don't know. This story is making me wonder if he's lost a couple. Because they're saying the Foo Fighters are saying their new album was nearly ruined by what? By ghosts. Oh, you know I'm going to hate this story. I'll tell you what happened at eight seventeen on the Rock. DJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. Wait, don't trash that used or broken computer, monitor, or TV. Do the right thing. Recycle your unwanted or non-working electronics for free. You can recycle computers, monitors, and televisions with eCycle Washington. Households, small businesses, public schools, and other organizations may drop off unwanted TVs, computers, and monitors at over 300 locations in Washington State for free. Find the location nearest you at eCycleWashington.org and click on Where Can I Recycle? That's eCycleWashington.org. For the last 75 seasons, the NBA has been getting greater. It's been crossing over, crossing borders, bending minds, breaking barriers, and shattering expectations. Because if the league's taught us one thing, it's that we can't predict anything. So don't miss one minute of the 75th anniversary season, where greatness lives on in every game. Visit NBA.com 75 to learn more. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. All right, Dave Grohl. Lots of things I love about Dave Grohl. Matter of yes. fact, I, I don't think there's anything I don't like about Dave Grohl, but now there may finally be something. He says that the Foo Fighters recorded their upcoming 10th album in an old Encino house, old house in Encino, California. He says that house turned out to be haunted. Ooh. Dave said, quote, yeah, you know, it's really good. Whoa, hey, whoa is there a ghost? Wow. Is there a ghost here? Woo, man, this is amazing. Yeah, you know, I, I don't feel so bad about having to like broadcast from home. We don't need to. We have, we have you. You're like a, a human folio. I'm a ghost whisperer. <laughs> I watch Casper. Oh yeah, you know wow. everything about ghosts. So yeah, Dave Grohl said when we walked into the house, I knew the vibes were definitely off, but the sound was effing on. He said started happening. Uh, the stuff. He said stuff just started happening almost right away, and. The entire band increasingly got weirded out. Their guitars would be detuned between sessions. All their settings on the soundboard would go back to zero. Their tracks would go missing, and some tracks they didn't record would be there instead. He said, quote, like weird open mic noises. So they set up a baby monitor camera to see if they could catch anyone messing with them. Okay. And they did see things on those tapes that they can't explain, but they can't say what they were. So then they went and found out the history of the house, and Dave says, Dave says, quote, and I had to sign an effing non-disclosure agreement with the landlord because he's trying to sell the place, so I can't give away what happened there. Well, I kind of give away a lot of it, though. Yeah, right? Well, I imagine it's probably things like maybe somebody got murdered or something. Oh, and that's, that's, why why the, the, that's why the ghost is still but hanging out. if you're out. selling a house, you have to disclose that stuff. You're supposed to disclose a lot. You're right, yeah, Rev. Yeah, if like, someone dies there, if you ask the realtor, hey, did someone die here? They need to tell you that. Yes, if you ask them, I don't think they got to come right out and tell you that, though. Yeah. I mean, I, someone, someone, you mean, it's just if someone just died or if some, if there was a horrible crime. Yeah, well, either. Yeah, see, I oh, mean. I thought they put it on the big house for sale. Last owner died. Tragic yeah. death. They don't yeah. put that on there? I don't think you got to put that on there. I, like, like, like Rev said, though, I suppose if you were at, I mean, is it, are you going to go to every open house and go, here's the thing. I need to know, did anybody die here? That's the first thing well, he asked the realtor. When I was buying my house, I told the realtor that if uh, somebody had died in the house, that does not automatically dissuade me from getting it, because there may be ghosts, and I'm kind of down for that. Yeah. Same. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm oh. sorry. I can't do it. You know what I couldn't do? The other day, I, well, it's a while now, because it was before all the corona stuff. We, had, we went out to dinner with some people, and someone was like, kind of like a, like, just got it, like, he's done well for himself in the world of whatever, and... He's, he's sharing a story. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, you know, I grew up in a house that was haunted. Oh, boy. And then I was just like, Here and my go. wife started laughing because she just she could feel me just go, oh. <laughs> and somebody was like, oh, tell us stories about it, right? Oh, okay. And it wasn't just one. Like, the first story was kind of interesting. I was like, okay, that's kind of a cool story. Whether or not you believe in ghosts or whatever, it was an interesting story, and it was kind of fun. All right. right? But that, like... That inspired him to then continue to tell more ghost stories for the entire dinner. Oh, no. And it was almost to a point where I was just like, look. Yeah, there's got to be something else. To we got to pump the brakes on these ghost stories. They're not that interesting. Yeah. Like, it might have been interesting to you when you were six. Yeah. 
And, you know, wow. it, it was just like, yeah, yeah, dude, we went back to childhood. Dude, the art of conversation is not an easy thing. And guys just, in general, guys just don't know how to do it. So but they, the thing is, this guy's usually really great at it. Like, we've oh, gone yeah. to dinner with him before, oh. and he's like the... He holds court. Very interesting. Guy. Oh, but then he just so he so he he dumped his job of holding court and turned into the ghost whisperer. Well, I think he thought the stories were equally as interesting as his other stories. Probably not and, as great. Probably not a great convo artist after all, Steve. Apparently, or yeah. maybe it was just he, he he struck gold the last time, and this time. Oh, you always got to leave them wanting bankrupt. more. That's the that's the rule of everything. Leave them wanting more. But I get it. You know, some people when they realize they're holding court, yeah, and they get that high, that adrenaline, like I am the star of this party, yep. and they, they they you know they keep going to the well, and it's like no, you can't go to the once you go to the well too much. It's well, too and late. the problem also is you paid for dinner, so you just don't know. Yet. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you got to hold dinner. You have to sit and listen. They got to listen. Oh, that's yeah, the lecturer. Listen. If he pays for dinner, he's got a captive audience. That's oh, of when course. The, the slides come out of their vacation. You know the, the well, <laughs> stuff. Wife, Look like, at my phone. She was struggling not to laugh because, like, it was. I was just like, oh. Luckily, I was sitting on the same side as him, so he couldn't see my facial expressions. I'm just like, oh, oh. tell me another crazy ghost story. And Steve, let me tell you, you do not do a good job hiding your facial expressions. <laughs> no, I terrible. Know that. I really, face. as a matter of yeah, fact, not subtle at all. Steve, I, I'm not know. trying to hide my facial expressions. <laughs> I, I'm fine with people seeing. Oh, them. I, you know, I know you. I know how. Cause my, thanks to my wife and, and and Vicky, as a matter of fact, because both you and Vicky are really good uh-huh. at communicating without words. Nice. Like you know what's going on. If you pay attention, you go. Oh, I know what's happening with both those guys. I'm yeah. going to have to talk to them. And so I've learned. And you are, now that I've learned your language, it's like you just come out and just tell everybody to F off without saying a word. It's pretty amazing. It is. It is. I just look at you when somebody says anything and I go, they have no idea that Steve just told them to F off without saying a word. His face just said all of it. So says, that's how we feel about your wrestling story, Steve. Oh. Ooh. Sick burn. Whoa. Here's the thing. Mm. My stupid wrestling stories go for maybe three, four minutes. I'm not going to say a word. Fine. I'm oh, that's so polite of you. I'm not going to say a word. Right. I am very. Uh, that's. I am diligent because I know that nobody gives a crap about game boards, uh, board games as much as I do. So I really try to limit it as much as possible. Right. But could you imagine an entire show where that's all you talked about? That's what I'm trying to say. Some people like, might think that's a, what you do. A five ten minute story about a ghost is fine. Yeah. But four hours or three hours at dinner? Yeah. Oh, I, I I get it. I was like, yeah. you've got to stop. Buddy. Yeah. Mix it, it up. It's you know, and it's tough for us because we know that people listen to our show. You know, like every 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 morning at the same mm-hmm. time while they weren't sheltered in place. This is going to be different for people. Their their morning commute is going to be a lot longer or shorter depending on how they want to do it. But at least in the situation, I mean, this guy's joking, whatever. But yeah. like, is you, he you might not be, yeah. but. You come to the show, if you're familiar with our show, you know that there's going to come a point where you're going to nerd out about yeah. board games. I'm going to nerd out about wrestling. Oh, yeah. You know, Vicky's going to nerd out about something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Vicky something. will just be, she'll just be looking What's at memes. What's in her purse? <laughs> yeah, she'll, just be, yeah, she'll be memeing all day long. Uh, it's a backpack, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Danny, will, Danny at some point will tell us that Dion's Pizza in New Mexico is the best. It's delicious. And yeah. Simple Plan's the greatest band ever made. That's true. Yeah. But, like, you don't expect that. Like, you know, and I, If I knew the guy was, like, a guy that's known for his ghost stories, at least I went in expecting that. See, people are like that with astrology. I, 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 I'm done with astrology. I don't want people to have astrology conversations with me because of the fact that it's been debunked in so many different ways that people would just pay attention, uh, including the fact that the stars have been all misaligned in the first place or mislabeled so that all the stuff they've been believing may not be really what's accurately up in the sky anyway, if they're even trying to make it scientific. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just like, no, you know what? I, I No, I'm, a, I'm not a Virgo. Don't tell me I've got these things. No. You know, in your well, vague like, stupidity when it comes to this. There's sometimes you get these stories in the news. It's like, oh, there's a crazy ghost story. And one of us will be like, oh, we should do a whole like topic about ghost stories. And my first thought is we've, I remember doing that once. And it happened once. Because it was just like, these stories are never quick. The ghost stories that like, no. they sometimes take like no. an entire dinner to get through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I know that people believe it. And as a matter of fact, I would like to say to Joe and Healy, please don't Facebook message me and email me. I know it's you their guys anniversary, are, guys. I know, but the anniversary. I, Tell some I, ghost I, stories. You're not going to be able to convince me that ghosts are real. And I know I'm not going to be able to convince you that they aren't. And I'm. And look, I need to take you on a ghost tour, buddy. There's no. We you went don't. on that ghost tour, and it was pretty awesome. Yeah, I didn't feel like anybody was after me at all. I, I you know, <gasps> it's just some cool Photoshop. I mean, photo photo ops. Yeah. Because even after death, nobody wants to follow you. Yeah, see that? Oh. They know what's up. <laughs> yeah. Sing. That was a Thank good you. ghost tour yeah. because it involved alcohol. Yes. 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 Oh, then, yeah, I'm up for the whole. Yeah, I'm up for the whole fun of it. Yeah. 
Look, I would I more believe that there may be parallel dimensions or even alien beings that that vibrate on a different frequency. I, I can believe that, but the idea that you know somebody is haunting me because they they can't figure out how to get between whatever purgatory and the afterlife or the inner life or whatever the hell they want to call it. I got news for you. Somebody murders me. I am not going to stick around in this world to get revenge. I'm going to go on to the next thing. Because they, they, that's what I'm going to do because they say there's a next thing. Why wouldn't I go to heaven? You don't know that. Maybe you have some unfinished business and you need to yeah. uh, commandeer all of us to help you out. Uh, I, there's no unfinished business. I'm done with you people. You don't know until it happens. Even if you kill me, I'm like, you know what? I know in reality, psychologically, you got to live with that. You're going to torment yourself. I mean, that's just humanity. So that I get my revenge by basically you doing a stupid thing. And then I get to go on to heaven, right? Or somewhere nice, I hope. Bermuda. Okay, Bermuda's good. <laughs> I hear Bermuda's uh, nice this time of year. Or Tahiti. I'm, I'm doing an Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. related. It was the wrong one. Uh, okay. Sorry about that. Close. So that's exactly how I feel when people will talk forever about themselves, what they found out on Ancestry.com. I'm going to give you a little clue. The art of conversation, and this is something most guys have to do. Uh, you know, I think women are better at it, no doubt about it, but there are also women that can drone on and on. Here's a question you ask yourself. Are you ready? You ask yourself as you're talking, do they give an F about what I'm talking about right now? Look at their faces and see, do these people actually care? And are you, if you're brave enough, and Steve, what, I, I know you'd answer this honestly, if all of a sudden I, I'm, you know, blah, 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 and then all of a sudden if I just stopped and go, can I ask you a question, Steve? Mm-hmm. Do you actually give a crap what I'm talking about right now? Absolutely not, yeah. Yeah, and I know yeah. you'd say yes. Yeah. Do you know how much help that would be for the average person? They would know, oh, I'll, I'll learn the tune out factor, and therefore I'll learn to either change the subject or let somebody else talk. That's something if humans did, what a great time it would be. Yeah. Oh, do you guys ever have that moment where you're in a group, you kind of know everybody, but nobody is talking. And so you feel like you kind of have to fill the void because everyone's sitting no, there. I like, like watching it get more and more awkward. Oh, man. That's you, Vicky, to a T. Yeah, like if everyone's just sitting around, not doing anything, there's nothing to distract you, no games, no TV oh, or nothing. Vicky, you're oh, just boy. sitting in a circle just oh, kind of staring at each other. Oh, I thrive in those. I, oh. love, I love the awkwardness. I think it's so funny. And so I just get in, there's like, always someone like you that can't handle it. No, it drives me insane. So I start doing something like basically doing an interview show. I'm like, hey, guys, if uh, you could have any car in the world, what car would you get? You know, and everyone just Is that why you me. do that? Yeah, it makes me very uncomfortable. I always thought that Vicky was just trying to, like, start a game with everyone. I never thought that no. it was, she was uncomfortable. Oh, I feel bad no, sometimes yeah. she'll say that and I'll be like, what kind of stupid question is that? <laughs> I'm just like, I am so uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> That's totally Vicky being uncomfortable. Oh my gosh! There's yeah. been so many times where we'll be at like radio conventions or yeah. something, and she'll like, ask like the most, and I'm like, "Why are you even asking that question?" Now I get it. Yeah, I just get really uncomfortable. Like somebody just talk. So it now have we know. To be me. Somebody else needs to talk. No one talks even after she asks just, that. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just nod. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now I'm going to just start going on on the dumbest things I can think of. Oh, th- you mean you're going to just start doing that? That's all you ever do when there's silence. Fair point. Yeah. It's just like, oh, I'm going to start something I'm already well, I was doing. Like, I feel kind of bad, but I I was having a rough go yesterday. I was trying to figure out my FaceTime, my, my face, facial recognition on my phone just stopped working. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I was just like, what the hell's going on? Like, it's been work. I've had this phone for several months. And you've had that face for a lot of years now. I've been stuck with this face, unfortunately, for over 40 years. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, there's, I mean, I feel right. like it's your same face. So it's been like giving me an issue. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm like, what the hell's going on? So I disable it. Now I won't even read my face. And I'm just like, <laughs> what? What the Whoa. heck is? It turns out I just had to turn the phone off and turn it back on. Okay, like, I was going to power it off. The IT crowd knows the best. I mean, they've spoiler always alert. known the best thing. Yeah, spoiler alert. Yeah. But while I'm trying to deal with this, Vicky chimes in and just says, "Well, have you ever had it set up with your facial recognition before?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Yes." What? Yeah. That is a stupid question. I know, Vicky's not help. You can't do stuff <laughs> like, around Vicky. That's the problem. It, I used to, it, it worked just fine up until two minutes ago. My thing is, like, he's complaining about it out loud, like, each step. Like, this isn't working, this isn't working. So my head, it's telling me, like, I need solutions. It's kind of like the guy thing where, like, a guy, <laughs> a girl's wanting to vent. Oh, yeah, Vicky, you, just, are, you are You are. You're such in the a room guy. When that, I'm I just like, bad, like, like, giving you a hard time about that. But I'm like, that is the, easily the dumbest question <laughs> like, to ask. Like, that's like, good so since yeah. I lost my keys. Well, where'd you put them last? Well, if I knew, I wouldn't have him lost. Well, I also looked at your phone case. I'm like, wait, is it a new phone?
phone? Did I not pay attention that I know. you got a new, it, it, new phone? Steve, I was watching all this go down, and <laughs> I smiled. Like, I go, oh, my. If, if I, I go, Vicky has no idea. She is just right, right about to get in. You're going to get that guy explosion where the the, 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 the woman in the oh. guy's life goes, what the F is wrong with you? And the guy goes, I'm going to try to help. I'm, no, yeah. it brought levity to me because oh. it made me laugh. I'm like, that's, that's the dumbest question oh. anyone can ask when you are complaining about what the facial recognition not working. And then she's like, well, did you ever set it up with your face? Yeah, I, no, I set it up person. with Danny's face for some reason. It's not working now. So confusing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, Vicky's the last person I like to go to when there's a problem because she does ask the simplest, dumbest questions. Do you know that you have an iPhone? You know, stuff like that. It's just like, I'm going to I'm gonna drop kick you, you But little. then it's awesome when I'm actually right about something. It's like, did you do it this way? Wait. Oh, no. Damn it. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, right. So it's actually kind of no, gratifying. A blind squirrel gets a nut every once in a while. You're absolutely right, Steve. <laughs> Out of 100 in it, it's worth it. So, so since Vicky, you're my soulmate with questions like that, LOL. So I want to I want to point people to a video because this just brought up a really really funny video that um, that is we're all basically self quarantining we're all living with our spouses way too long and our family members and these moments are going to happen and we will not realize it's just the way we do our language as opposed to somebody really actually being non helpful and it is that whole thing where someone's just venting or someone just doesn't want a solution but then there's another person as soon as you open your mouth they just come up with a stream of solutions to a problem that's not even there Mm -hmm. and this video is called it's not about the nail it's one of the you'll see it's got skillions of views look it up on youtube it's not about the nail and it's maybe i don't know a minute to two minutes long it is one of the funniest things and watch it with your watch it with your significant other and you will you'll both laugh because one of you is the person on one side of the couch and one of you is the person on the other side of the couch it is a very very funny video it's got almost 20 million views Oh, this is so funny. As soon as you tell people about this, you know, I didn't even know it existed. And then once it was shown to me for the first time, I'm like, oh, my God, this would save so many marriages. Someone said this video changed my marriage. My wife will let me fix things now. Occasionally. Yeah, it's this is a hysterical video. I love this video a lot. And it basically illustrates what Steve and Vicky were just in the middle of yesterday. <laughs> totally does. Because you have spouses all over your life. Work spouses, your regular spouse. You've got these relationships. I'm inundated with spouses. Yeah, you've got spouses everywhere, buddy. So it's not about the nail. That's what it's called. Look it up on YouTube. Oh, it's only a minute and 40 seconds. Yeah, it's not a lot. And you are going to smile. And you know what? This, this, I wouldn't be surprised if people start, like, they gets 40 million views. Because right now, we need something to break the tension and keep us sane. Is it just something that can people just play along by hearing the audio? Because if Rev could pull it up, why don't we just listen to it? Uh, no, you got to see the video, too, oh, unfortunately. Yeah. They get naked? Yeah, they don't get naked. No. <laughs> they don't get naked. Yeah, but yeah, it's totally a visual yeah, thing. Yeah, it's a visual thing. And oh, I don't want- I see why. I don't want to ruin. I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> okay. I just let it. You just, yeah. just play it and let it go. It, that's the beauty of it all. Um, it, it is. It's fantastic. It, is, really it cool. is so fantastic. Okay. And both sides of this equation are going to get it. They're going to go. Well, I totally get that guy's side, and then there's a, no, I totally get her side. It's it shows you the difference between how different brains think. And uh, most of the time, you know, it's a female brain and a male brain. But, you know, my wife and I are switched. She's the guy in this video and I'm the girl in the video for our relationship. And it's really, it's awesome. It's not about the nail. (laughs) All right. Have you heard about uh, Kevin T. Porter, who's a comic, who uh, got people pissed off on Twitter the other day because he said that Ellen DeGeneres, the woman you love, who you think is the best talk show host ever, he says she is notoriously one of the meanest people alive. No, no. Don't do not do this to me. I am sorry. I mean, first Ben Affleck and now Ellen. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Where are my heroes? I know. I mean, it's, it's hard to argue. First Hulk Hogan. I, I mean, Ellen at this point, for so many things that she's done in her life. I mean, first of all, she's a mainstream, massive success in the, talk, in the world of talk shows. Also, of course, for the LGBTQ community, Ellen has been an amazing champion and has had to fight and rise up through the ranks and go through a lot of crap before she got to the level of success that she's at. And, of course, all the stuff she does in the show, outside of the show, it's just hard to, it's, it's hard to not like Ellen. For everything that's just who she represents and everything she's been. Her interviews are super fun. I don't watch the show, like, ever. But I watch clips that they'll get posted, like, on YouTube. Burning questions, like me and D. Ted Smith, we always replay some of those. Because they're just kind of fun to answer the questions that she asks some of the celebrities uh, yeah, uh, on the I, Megacast. We I, do that. I can't. You can't tell me she's a jerk. 
I'm not. Yeah. And this guy said, I guess he asked people, he said, here's what I'm going to do. Send me stories about how mean Ellen DeGeneres really is. And he promised to donate two bucks to the L.A. Food Bank for each story he got. Oh, boy. He got a lot. People could be making up stories just because they want to help out the community. I think that's just what happened towards the end of this, because some of these I'm like, really? Um, But, you know, he uh, here's some things that people claimed about Ellen, which, like you said, Steve, could be, be made up just to donate money. Said here that she fired her head writer and never spoke to her again because she refused to cross the picket line during a writer's strike. Okay. That sounds very serious. Yeah. Sounds like it could have happened. Um, also here, one, one person said Ellen once complained to a restaurant owner because he had served her chip. Uh, her server had chipped nail polish. So because of that, the woman almost got fired. Um, yeah, you know, I could that see like that being a thing. It, well, yes. If you, some people have a thing about nails. And yeah. if somebody shows up with chip nail polish, it does. It does to me. It looks like what you really. We've had to send Danny Danny home a couple of times because. Oh of that. yeah, I can't handle it. You don't right. look at my nails right now. No, I'm. Don't let him see them. Now this one here is extreme. It says here she once threw a plate of salmon in a waiter's face because it wasn't what she ordered. Now that come on is the yeah. first one that if it's true, then yeah, that would make her look bad. But I can't. Can really. I can't I would believe love, that. Imagine sitting some like, like right by and you're like, hey, that's Ellen over there. And then she throws a salmon at someone. Yeah, that My would, night would be made. Yeah. I would tip that waiter. Now, this one here is totally me. You guys know this is me, so I could see this being somebody else. It says here that Ellen has a sensitive nose, so everyone has to chew gum from a bowl outside her office before speaking to her. And if she thinks you smell, she'll send you home. This sounds like you. That's, that's, totally a, that's a BJ thing, right? Absolutely. There. I have a sensitive nose too, and it's hard to not it's it's hard to not look like an a hole. But really, I get headaches from just what people don't even notice when it comes well, to aromas. Certain, certain offices have no fragrance policy, fi- yeah. fragrance policies, or fragrance if you're Elmer Fudd. <laughs> yeah. Oh, watch out for those wascoy fragrances. <laughs> I once threw a salmon in the face of somebody who I felt like smelled too bad. It was Danny. That's why he now sprays his cologne in his mouth. It's true. He chipped his chipped nails. He got a salmon to the face for that. What about sending someone home because they're wearing sandals and they're showing their bare feet? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's me. No. Oh, yeah. It's a good thing I haven't had the level of success Ellen has had because then we could play Ellen or BJ. Dude, people would come out of the woodwork telling you horror stories about me, and I know they're all true. That's the sad thing is that I was such an a hole. It might still be uh, that I'm so happy I haven't had her level of success. And that's the thing when you're Ellen. Of course, people are going to come out of the woodwork and yep. complain about everything because she's a human being. She's going to do some things that in her world she doesn't even notice is pissing somebody off, but would piss somebody off. Yeah, but throw, I mean, throwing a salmon at somebody, you got to know oh, that you're a pretty a, douchey person if you're doing that. That's the only thing. You're right. That's the one that I look at and go, yeah. Now, it says here she fired a slightly autistic custodian because he, quote, forgot he wasn't allowed to look or speak to her, look at her, and he loved greeting everyone. The look at her or speak to thing, I feel like that's... that a Paul Allen thing, remember that? That was was like the rumor. And I feel like that's a a personal assistant or, you know, a manager that makes that crap up. Because, you know, we've... I get it. So, you know, you know me. I say yes to a lot of things, so people have to go through you guys to make sure I don't say yes to some stuff that would be bad for the show. But... I just can't imagine some people that we've met that would be having don't look at me, don't speak to me things. Because we've heard harsh things about people and then we've interviewed them and they've been fine. Yeah, but when we interview them, they're on their best behavior. Yeah, that's a good point. Salmon to the face. So that's the that's the, the, the worst one. How about this one? Actually, this one could be the one that might get you to think. They say that Ellen adopts really cute kittens and puppies, but as they get older, she'll get tired of them and force friends, family, or staff to adopt them. Well, what's wrong with that? Oh, <laughs> and so far Portia is still in her life. I mean, she hasn't tried to get anybody to uh, adopt Portia yet. Oh. As Portia's well, Portia's age too, just like any human being. I mean, you just wonder. Like, it's nice that you've <laughs> compared her significant other to her. I was just thinking she likes animal. young yeah. things, and you know, does it translate to humans as well? Like, you know, humans do basically do trade trade in their spouses for uh, younger versions. Kittens are cool, but man, when they turn into cats, I don't. No offense, Fred, but jeez, man. Oh, I don't know. My cats fun. are listening right now. Sorry. Yeah, well, with the exception of Carl and Frank. Thank you. Yeah. Look, those I, guys are cool. I, I I hate to say this. God, I don't even want to be talking about this. But no, I think that puppies and cats, when it comes to who's cuter as they get older, it's c- cats went all the way. Yeah, kittens no. all the way. Dogs look like idiots as they get older. Just a big mess of nothing. Big happy mess. But of cats nothing. still all they're still purring. They're still furry. I mean, they still have a bad attitude. But that's what I mean. But that they, are, they, but in general, their look is still like very cute looking, no. as opposed to some big ass dumb dog that drools we'll and disagree. dumps everywhere. <laughs> oh, we'll have to disagree, will we? Yeah. All right, I guess we will. <laughs> All right, fine.
<laughs> it's not about the nail. Yesterday, Steve, he did get this one wrong. What six-letter word starting with G means a waterproof overshoot typically made of rubber? Gutters. No. Gutter. No. Uh, Gertrude. No. Hello, Gertrude. How about gutter? I think that might be the answer. Is it gutter? No, it's not. The answer, the uh, Gertie, Grody, the Grody and Galloping Gertie together. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Uh, the answer is galosh, and I had no idea that in fact galoshes had a singular version. Galosh. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you want a shot at beating Steve? Okay, you got it. Two oh six four two one Rock. We're playing Beat Migs at eight forty seven on the Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. How do I figure out who my creditors are? Some people, a lot of times, have had a lot, a long time of not having good credit and having collections, and so they they're concerned that uh, you may be concerned that you you won't be able to find all your creditors if you file bankruptcy. How will I know which collection agency has my credit card bill from ten years ago now? Uh, and that's that's something that's hard to keep track of when because credit collection agencies transfer your debts all over the place. But we will pull all your credit bureaus and by getting all three of your credit bureaus, we'll be able to tell who has your credit and debt now, uh, which collection agencies have had it in the past, and we'll make sure that we file all your creditors when we file your bankruptcy so that nothing slips through the cracks. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. Wanted, dead or barely alive. Your old or outdated computers, monitors, and televisions, working or not. Don't trash it, recycle it. eCycle Washington makes it easy. Households, small businesses, public schools, and other organizations in Washington may drop off unwanted computers, monitors, and televisions at over 300 locations statewide for free. Find the location nearest you at eCycleWashington.org and click on Where Can I Recycle? That's eCycleWashington.org.